that pedal show. Dan here. Mick here. And Joey here. Thank you. Fantastic. Fantastic. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming over. We really appreciate it. It's a a distinct pleasure to be here with you guys. You got on a plane and came all the way from Canada right to here, right? That's (laughs) that's right, by way of Brussels. We took a little detour a couple days, but... Actually, a little bit of explanation probably in order. Um... You did a date with the brothers. I did. I did. We played a blues festival in uh, Pier, Belgium, called Blues Pier. It was really fun. And uh, So there may be some more brothers activity. Well, I started a hashtag, you guys. I started a hashtag, bros are back. Yes. So we're, we're doing some more good. touring. We got a bunch of, we've got a bunch of dates coming up. Uh, in North America, we're... we're um, might even be a record coming out at some yeah. point in the new year. Yeah, awesome. Coming back over here and touring touring the country proper. So for anyone who doesn't know, Brothers Landreth, uh, Joey's band with his brother David, uh, Ariel, and your drummer is called? Ryan Rhinovoth. Okay. So uh, that's how we had our first introduction to Joey. Again, if you're not aware, if you haven't seen the show we did with Joey a few months back, please go and watch that. And we've got some other guests here today, which is great. So we've got Joey's coming in, so we thought, great, let's... Uh, Tom is here from uh, Universal Audio, helping us with some audio experiments that we're doing currently. That's why it sounds so good. <laughs> and Jack is here from Origin Effects, who brought these. Dun, 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 1960, 61. Super, brown face, which we'll get into, and a 66, black face twin. Some very nice vintage Fender amplifiers, because, Daniel, we're gonna talk about tremolo today. And I thought, so good to have Joey on talking about tremolo and to have these amps here and have looks at pedals and the brown face thing and the harmonic tremolo and amplitude and all the stuff. <laughs> we can, yeah. We get asked a lot. So we have done shows on tremolo pedals uh, where we've compared modern trems and the number one comment we get is, but what about harmonic tremolo? And is Joey, because Joey's a big fan of this, having recently acquired your own vintage brown face amp, right? Yeah, two of them, actually. Shall we define the brown face thing first? Because this is... I didn't really know about the tiny little era in the Fender thing. Yeah, is that, is that Q, that's Q Me. Um, they were uh, sort of a transitionary period between Tweed and Blackface, sort of, in hindsight. And so the, the first one sort of hit... Uh, in 1960, and I think the last ones they made were 64. I think was the last one that they made. It. Right. It might have actually they might have actually stopped production a little earlier. Okay. So it was kind of like 63 was the last one, but there was still. The still had parts left over. Yeah, that came that, out. Yeah. yeah. Leo would always anything he had left over, he would always use. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. So he was he was uh, notoriously thrifty, um, <laughs> but so there there it's kind of a cool era because the circuits changed. That was his rap name. <laughs> Notoriously thrifty. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Leo. Yeah, yeah. So we, <laughs> can hear him spinning from here. <laughs> it's like a like a harmonic tremolo. Sounds like a harmonic yeah, tremolo. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. actually where it came from. Uh, Leo spinning in his grave. That's this is horrible. Yeah, let's move along. I don't feel good about it. No. Um, yeah. So and and as they sort of 
uh, as the circuits progressed closer to blackface, they changed little by little. So the the earlier ones are actually a little closer to to tweed amps than mm. to blackface. And then as the circuits progressed, then eventually it just they became the blackface amps. But um, there's like a there's a famous the early 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 uh, serial numbers of the supers. Um, I think there was I think there's like ten of them which are prototypes. Oh. And then like the knobs are backwards and like. Yeah. They, they, they can't find them all. It's like this really cool kind of mythical thing. But uh, they're, 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 my favorite, they're my favorite era of Fender amps. And I had a, a friend of mine lent me um, an early brown face super years ago. And I've been kind of chasing that sound ever since. And then I thought, well, why don't I just save up my shekels and get one? So I did. And that's what happened. And so for anyone who really doesn't know about this stuff, a uh, tweed fender is something like um, a basement or you know any of the old fenders that are kind of had that tweed covering on usually an oxblood grill cover black face fender is so called not because the grill cloth is black but because the panel along the top where the knobs are that's why they're called black face fenders so tweed um, Dan's just gone off to retrieve today's doorstop so but that's the tweed that's the tweed look <coughs> Um, this one we prepared earlier. Ish. That one, not made by Fender, made by Lazy J. Uh, and sometimes it would have an Oxblood grill, I think. Yeah. Um, and so called blackface because the panel where the knobs are, as we said, is uh, is black. So apologies if that's overly simplistic, but there will be people out there who don't know that. So, And of course, that 60s Fender blackface thing is where you get your twin reverb, where you get your um, deluxe. Reverb. Lost reverb yeah. And the, the reverb part of that is really key because here is a super which doesn't have doesn't have reverb, reverb because it, it wasn't around at that no. point. So the, o the only the only brown face amp that had reverb was the vibro verb. Mm. Oh wow. Uh, and they didn't they didn't make very many of them and if you if you find one they're like a uh, hundred million dollars. At least. At least. Fabulous. So yeah. let's what since we saw you last, your board has changed a little bit. So maybe you could show us a couple things on here before we get into the trem thing. What's what's sure? Is it constantly evolving? It's kind of constantly evolving, and I'm I'm sort of swapping things in and out. I I go back and forth between, uh, you know, the King of Tone, the Jan Ray, um, uh, the Mythos Daedalus. Um, they're kind of similar-ish flavor, but this this is the, the my newest. This guy and this guy are the newest edition, and they're made by a guy named Jesse Davy. Um, uh, him of used to play guitar in the UK. Yeah, 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 yeah. No yeah. way. <clears throat> yeah, and he's an absolute badass guitar player, and um, the pedals he builds are unbelievable. And wow. um, to me, he's he's got the right ear and the right geekery, and he's a wonderful, wonderful guitar player. So he kind of knows exactly what's going on um, in terms of like you know plugging in and playing and stuff. The hoax. That's it. The hoax. That's it. There we go. That's it. Yeah, he's sorry, Jesse. Yeah, really, really, Take really, a really, really great guy, and um, sent these two pedals for me to check out. Actually, I, bo I, I had borrowed them from a friend of mine uh, who said you're gonna love these things, and then I, 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 I hung on to them for a little while, and then got in touch with Jesse and said I got, I gotta have some. So he sent me uh, uh, this guy, which is, which is kind of the blues breaker on the left, mm -hmm. tube screamer esque kind of thing on the right, which mm -hmm. is um, that's kill us uh which is which is really really great and i've i actually have never had a tube screamer uh like ever in my life right. so this is this is kind of like my my first foray into it and um we're going home sorry man what is it? Like now he's gone <laughs> never had a nah. tube screamer i'm sorry <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> but it's you know well now now i've got an awesome one so yeah, so it's it, it's it's got all kinds of cool little uh, tweaks to it, and um, right, let's hear it. You want to hear it? Yeah, enough, enough talking about it. Uh, <laughs>
sounds like that. Lovely, lovely. <laughs> and then uh, I don't know where this is at because uh, I just got off the airplanes. <laughs> But it's got this switch, which I couldn't tell you what it does. Uh, but um, that's, I think this is supposed to be wide open. I think I actually have it on stock. Yeah. Although, is that sounds pretty awesome on the fan. Is that a diode thing? Is it a clipping thing? Because it seemed to be kind of bright, or is it just literally no, if a, it's a tube screamer? If it's a tube screamer, it's a combination of the way they use the op amp and the, the clipping diodes. Yeah. Um, but you know, I'm thinking he's got a full range OD on the left hand side, and there's a sort of mid hump OD on the right hand oh, side. Oh, I, I wonder if else uh, does that yeah, sort of. Uh, does that kind of thing. Yeah. No idea. <laughs> It uh, sounds ace. It uh, does. At the expense, at the expense of an in joke that no one got, we're talking about the DNM drive, the Keeley DNM drive. Honk. Honk. Yeah. Anyway, blah blah blah. Um, that sounds very cool. It, it sounds really nice. Yeah, I really really like it. And, and I, I do like a good knob, as you know. So there's spectacular <coughs> knobs on those things. <coughs> okay. Now the fuzz. Yeah, and th this is kind of where the whole thing. Uh, the whole thing gets pretty special for me is that when they when they're combined, uh, something really cool happens. So this is the this is the fuzz going into the uh, the heavy hand side. He calls it. <laughs> the other side which is another really cool flavor <laughs> wow so chewy wow yeah it's really chewy Are they, you do microtones and stuff when you're going eh, that's uh, so cool maybe not on purpose <laughs> Sorry. That's the only slide guitar lesson I ever had. You haven't gone wrong until you stop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that's been said before on the show, but... Feels right to me. Sounds amazing. <laughs> Sounds you. amazing. So you've noticed that neither Mick or I have guitars today. No. Nah. There's just no way. <laughs> but sometimes you just, you just... It's the right time to put it down. What's this? I'm, have I seen this before? Uh, I just got that. That's the, that's the Walrus 385 drive, overdrive. Yeah. And it's um, it's modeled after a projector amp of some sort. And I, I, I haven't really oh, had wow. a chance to dig into it, but mm -hmm. should we check it out? Yes, so listen. Let's dig. Okay. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
it's uh, it's pretty cool and gritty and very nice. Mm. Is it? I'm gonna have to hit the internet to find out what it's supposed to be because to me it reminds me of a super OE kind of thing. I don't know if it's supposed to be that, but I'm gonna do this anyway. Do it. I'm gonna do it. Siri. <laughs> so, uh, excuse me, Siri. Okay, okay. So while I was searching uh, on my phone there, we also had a little discussion in the room. Who knew? Turns out 385 is a Howell 385 film sound projector. Basically made after a vintage film projector, and it's the audio bit of the vintage film projector. Wow. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because... Because that's what you would do, isn't it? You would think, where do where do I hear great guitar sounds? It's in an old film projector. <laughs> I love that. It's cool. I love it. And someone yeah. said, did somebody say Blake Mills? He's Blake Mills. Mills. Yeah, he's he's those crazy contraptions with the folding doors and stuff. That's that's uh, he uses a bunch of them, and then he uses the uh, Victoria reverberato thing uh, nice. with the harmonic tremolo in it. Well, Blake, because you turned me on to Blake. Yeah. And. Paul Stacey also mentioned it. I thought, okay, and then that that hi ho, hey hey hi ho, hi ho, hi ho, hi ho. That over. album is. Have you heard it, man? Oh man, look, we, we we'll oh, my maybe goodness. tonight we'll just sit yeah, with okay. it. We'll all get like a three way headphone splitter and listen to the record back to front. You'll freak out. It's it's incredible, absolutely incredible. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's the, like it's the most luscious. Sounding record, I think, in existence. The songs on it. Yeah. That's um. Anyway. Anyway. So Blake Mills, awesome. 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 Um. Right. So. He said. He said the magic words, harmonic tremolo. Harmonic tremolo. Yeah. Right. So, the brown face. One of the things about the brown face era amplifiers, this thing called harmonic tremolo. A tremolo. If you've watched the show before, you'll know the tremolo. A basic tremolo, is where we have our audio. And the audio dips in and out in volume. It changes the amplitude as opposed to changing the pitch. It's just changing the volume. What he means is it gets louder and quieter. Yeah. So instead of going, ah, ah, it goes, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> right? <clears throat> so if we can listen to a, a normal tremolo. If yeah. You, um, so what's that? This is, this is the um, Walrus Monument. OK. Yeah. And this thing is great. Uh, where are we here? Let's just go clean. Sorry, sorry. So um, is, is the chords? It's the harmonic noise. It is. It just it just me. never stops. Anyway, okay. we're not going to say too much more because all that happens now is we get a million comments. People go, "Oh, he's just kissing his ass." Come on, move on. <laughs> that was rubbish, Joey. Now, <laughs> right. So that's a standard tremolo. Yeah. When we talk about a harmonic tremolo, what they did was so cool. So if you imagine that they've got the audio coming in and they split it in half. They had two different so bass frequencies in one direction, treble frequencies in another. I did not know this. Right. Oh, okay. So and then they modulate those, but they modulate them in off, uh, they modulate them in opposite directions. Right. So you get this really strange, almost phasing effect. Yeah. So and it's really full on and complicated, but the sound. So let's have a listen to the the. the how much trim in the super? Okay, where do we have it set? About here, Joey? Yeah. Just going to turn the twin reverb down a second, just so that we're only hearing the uh, the super. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. 
I want to know, is it, is it, the way it works sort of uh, scientifically, is it the same as uh, a univibe, kind of? Is that a similar thing? Because it's always, it's kind of giving me that univibe okay. vibe. Okay, so Mick, if you turn the intensity right up and the speed right down. <laughs> Okay, so you hear at one part of the wave, it's all bottom end, and mm -hmm. then it shifts, the other part of the wave is all top end. But at, there's always volume there. There's no, it doesn't dip in and out of volume. Right. Right? But what the... So in that sense, it can sound a little bit because there's a crossover point. Yeah. So it's moving backwards and forwards. But with a phaser, you've got the direct signal, and then you've got that other signal that's changing, that's moving in phase. Okay. So there are elements of that. There are elements of the phasing within what's going on with that harmonic tremolo. Right. But it is it is more that the signal split and you've got the bass and bass mids separated, mids treble separated. And then as one gets modulated, the other one gets modulated the other way. And so okay. and the, but there's a point there, because it's not exact where things cross over. Right. It's just and it gives you that sound. It's incredible. It's, but it's the impression of pitch movement. You do get the impression of pitch movement, but it's it's still not um, it's it's not modulating. Yeah. The it's not actually modulating pitch at all. It, no, it's it's. Do you get that or am I? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I know I know what you mean. I know what it's you mean. a phase. It is a phase relationship between those two signals. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, you're not you're not actually getting a, a pitch. It's just this that feeling of the of movement because of the, the, what's happening with those two signals. I mean, it's it's in, it's an incredible idea, you know, to go from a tw that simple tweed thing and think I know what we're gonna do. We're going to, you know, just just put a normal vibrato in there would be amazing, or tremolo, I should say. But to, to have that idea yeah. is incredible. Yeah, because let's rewind. So we're talking about the late 50s, amps are moving on, yeah. culture's moving on. I, keep, I use this example so many times, but imagine 1958. What comes out in 1958? The 335, the Flying V, Jazzmaster. Mm. Electric guitarists are looking at those three guitars going, what the hell? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then just a couple of years later, then, you know, amps are getting louder, 1960, we moved to brown face. It was a simple thing, I guess. It's mm. what they could do with the available electronics, mm. I'm assuming. Yeah. Rather than, you know, complex circuits, pedals hadn't arrived by that point, you know. It's mad. It's inc it, is, it is amazing. But that, that tremolo circuit sound is, is completely unique. Mm. Um, but your walrus trem has a harmonic tremolo on board. It, it does, yeah. So this is going to be its toughest test ever, then, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Let's see. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. So now let's hear the uh, let's hear the amp. It was about whoa, 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 whoa. Thank you. 
Part of the way through that, I just we've got a the sixty six twin now. I just turned that up just so you could hear that along with along with us. And I guess so. Given that we're already talking about a phase relationship here, mm -hmm. and we add another amp in, that's when it will get starts to get interesting. Doctor, if you turn the 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 tremolo off, yeah, and we'll just hear those two together. Okay. So if you put the, the tremolo on. Yeah. Now if I, if I change the phase on the twin. to hear what the mics are hearing yeah. because obviously where we sat yeah. there's one phase relationship <clears throat> in terms of the proximity of where we are to everything and then of course the mics are right closer to the amps and we've got a room mic so it will be fast Tom's raising his eyebrows there <laughs> it's going to be fascinating to hear what what actually happens when we hear that back the, the first time I, I plugged in another amp with my brown face and started sort of going back and forth between the the like the different sort of the phases like either in or out I was super blown away by the the whatever is happening in there, like with uh, the science and the physics and the math and all that. Um, I was getting the perception that my other amp was they were sort of doing a stereo thing. So it was, right. it, was it was really really cool, and I couldn't decide if I liked it better in phase or out of phase. It was really hard to. It's really it's like real wet dry, isn't it? Oh, it's just. I it's. I, I get I'm overwhelmed. Again, it's hard to talk. <laughs> but I, but it's being in the room with that sound is so moving. It really is. You can you can just like sit with one note. Oh man. Yeah. 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 That's what I. We always said. I mean, if you could only if you could only have the most basic thing, it would be guitar, amp, tremolo, reverb maybe. Yeah. Yeah. If yeah, I. Yeah. But then it starts. With it maybe. Oh, a bit of overdrive. Bit of overdrive. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Can it be? Oh, well, fuzz. I can't. I cannot yeah, have yeah, a fuzz yeah. face. It just goes yeah. from there. Yeah. But it's because you know trem tremolo is is one of those things that a lot of people don't get and they mm. don't use because they think it sounds weird and it, it's so simple but so brilliantly effective. It's like like reverb and tremolo was like a like like white a white t-shirt and blue jeans you know like you <laughs> and a and a pair of chucks you know you can't go wrong that's. You, you're most of the way there. To be fair. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't just name what I was wearing on purpose. I'm, I'm a man of simple taste. Here. So how do you how do you use the tremolo in that in that context? Then, in in what way do you use it? Or when you're playing live, when you're using the pedal? Because presumably you have the pedal because you don't always have an amp that's got yeah. it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. But I. I mean, I kind of use it the same way that one would use tremolo. Uh, and I've got um, a very. Do you guys get MacGyver over here? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I just was. I was making sure I wasn't making a stupid reference. Is he? I, I, well, I got to check. Is he a TV detective? He he was this guy He's, who he would he like. Could, he could defuse a nuclear bomb with a rubber band and uh, the ring uh, pull uh, off an old coke can. And yeah. He's amazing. Yeah. He's basically Dan Steinhardt. <laughs> uh, 
It's like you make I'm pedal board MacGyver. <laughs> you are. Oh my god. T-shirt. T- 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 yes. <laughs> yes. T- I'll take two. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it, uh, uh, I MacGyvered, which is a, a verb, yeah. obviously, uh, a cable with like a, a quarter inch to RCA jack, and um, uh, using the remote switches, uh, turn it on and off. So, oh, cool. So actually, and I have it so that like the the same. Uh, Stompbox mode button where my tremolo is um, is also, is also t- so so uh, I'll just like shut the it. I'll just shut Turn the tremolo off. pedal off and and then it says the same very thing. Very good, very good. My oh, man, a simple taste. I said, but uh, yeah, and so and then I'll also I'll also reach back and crank the intensity and kind of use it like um, like a rotary as well because mm. it has that yeah. kind of rotary quality. So, um, but yeah, it's, I'm just I'm totally addicted to it and I'm overusing it. And I'm I'm, I'm sure. <laughs> So, we've had a change of amplifier. I just wanted to try one thing. So, um, we'll have a listen to the, the amp trim. We swapped it out because um, the beautiful Blackface 66 twin we were using, um, we couldn't switch the tremolo on and off because we don't have the right foot switch. So we thought, hang on a minute, there is another amp here that we do have uh, with a decent valve tremolo in it, Victory V40 Deluxe, which I believe Joey used live. Mm-hmm. Sometimes. Um, Last Joey, time I was over here. I not, yeah, one. Joey's a Victory Amps artist, so um, let's give this a listen. So this is not harmonic tremolo, this is just a straight uh, alpha bias tremolo. How amazing is that? 
I don't know what's happened. Do you want to just like explain it. what happened? There? Well, all I did was I set up oh, like a timing relationship, sort of the see if it's doing triplets. You can hear it. Do, 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 do. <laughs> and this one should be going. Let's play this one first. You're so geeky. <laughs> How good is that? I don't think it gets any better. It's amazing. I don't think it gets any better. It's massive. So just for anyone not still tuned in, you've got harmonic tremolo happening in, in this amp going quicker, and you've got straight normal tremolo ha happening in that amp going slower, and that one's got reverb on it too. That's it, right? We've got no That's pedals it. on. No other pedals on. No That's other it. pedals on, yeah. Just two lots of tremolo, reverb. Guitar, amps, Joey. Oh yeah, him. <laughs> yeah. I just, uh, I just always wanted to try that. Can I just hear that with some overdrive, please? It might get too messy, but. Literally nothing more to say. <laughs> That's astonishing. What That's a sound. Astonishing. What That's an amazing. incredible sound. Right, we'll turn that down. Wow, okay. But you can do, you know, things like that. To messing with the timing and, you know, because they're different, they are different sounds, so they're both tremolos. It's just so cool what you can do with just having a play. Very cool. That's awesome. Well, um,. I'm, I'm all emotionally wrenched, <laughs> so I think, I think uh, we'll get we'll get you to play us out if okay. that's okay. Mm -hmm. But um, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, Joey. Um, it's always just it's always so moving and humbling and all that stuff. Just hearing you play, man, it's amazing. Go and see him. Buy yep. records. Buy a t-shirt. Do all of that. There you go. We'll stop. We'll stop the ass kissing now. Yeah. We'll say thank you to Tom, who's done the audio for today. Yes, thank you, Tom. Thank you, Tom. We'll say thank you to Jack. For thank you, Vinny. Yes, thank you, mate. Totally thank you so awesome, much. Awesome uh, vintage super and the twin um, from Origin Effects make the beautiful um, compressors, as we know. So thank you, guys. All right, guys. Uh, just thank you so much. Please subscribe. Uh, massive thank you to our patrons on Patreon and also to our preferred retailers in the UK and Europe. Anderson's Music in America Rift City Guitar and in Australia Pedal Empire and also massive thank you to everyone that's gone and bought a t-shirt or that pedal show nunchucks you know all the stuff that we have <laughs> yes uh, <laughs> come on can I have some and, <laughs> and Pedal Bulba Guy for t-shirts yeah, that, yeah. that are on the way we're going to get out of here and just let Joey do his thing thank you man oh it's my pleasure thanks thank for you. having me
Thank <laughs> you.